Well, hello and welcome. We are having our longest night service at the top of the hour at six o'clock. This is a service that's a little bit different than some of the things we do during Advent or Christmas, a time of joy, a time of hope. But when we look around, when we look at the year 2020, uh, this has been a difficult year. This is a service of lament on the longest night. We just had the shortest day. It's gonna get dark here soon. We have a fire going behind us. We hope you're able to join us in this service of lament. I have a pen and paper nearby so you can participate in some of the things that we're going to do. And we look forward to seeing you. Well, hello friends and welcome to our longest night service. Uh, we will be getting things going a little slowly. We have the fire going behind us already. And now as we listen to O Come, O Come, Emmanuel from our friends, Strength and Song.
Good evening, and welcome to Holmesville Church of the Brethren. Also a welcome from Beatrice Mennonite Summit Street Church, which is joining us in this service. Tonight is a night for us to be together in the dark, but let's admit it, so often darkness scares us. Darkness is our nightmare. We've been taught to fear it, to avoid it, to keep the lights on, to think happy thoughts, to pretend everything's all right, and to not go into that dark place. Yet we are here tonight in the dark because God created light and dark, day and night, and said both were good. To fear darkness is to miss what we can see there that we can't clearly see anywhere else. So here we are. We are in the dark. Will you say that with me? Here we are. We, we are, are in, in the, the dark. dark. We are here to acknowledge that we are in the dark about so many things. We have so many unanswered questions. We have so much fear and sorrow we can't make sense of, tucked away in secret places. And for some of us, we have fresh grief that's raw and feels unending. Here we are. We, we are, are in, in the, the dark. dark. We can hear in this night an invitation to not run so quickly to the bright, shiny objects, to easy answers, and to loud, well-lit rooms. This sacred darkness makes room for all who we are, for our laments and longings, our confessions and our cries. This darkness can help us see what we cannot see in the light. This dark and holy night can perhaps even be night where dreams are dreams, Hopes can be born. Here we are. We, we are, are in, in the, the dark. dark. And, and God, God is with us. us. We, we are, are not, not alone. alone. Thank you. 
be participating in the ancient biblical tradition of lament, the practice of mourning for all that's wrong and crying out to God and with God to make things right. Yes, with God. One of the things we learn from scripture is that God also laments. The prophet Ezekiel tells us that God has a scroll filled with God's own handwritten words of grief and sorrow. So we do not lament alone. One of the ways people expressed their laments in the Bible was by rending, by tearing their clothes. Clothing was an extremely valuable and limited resource in those days and not something that was easily replaced. So when they ripped their clothes to shreds, it spoke volumes. It was a way of physically expressing the pain they felt inside. A way of saying, I am torn up. My heart is ripped to shreds. And here we have one of our laments that has been submitted. This is the sound of our sorrow as we wait and wait and wait for God and for what's broken to be made whole. And yes, sometimes the wait seems so long, too long, and we feel like the writer of Psalm 22 who cried out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? While we listen, give to God your griefs. Sometimes I feel like a motherless child. Sometimes I feel like a motherless child. Sometimes I feel like a motherless child. So far from my home. Sometimes I feel like I'm almost gone. Sometimes I feel like I'm almost gone. Sometimes I feel like I'm almost gone. So far from my home. Throughout our worship, we want to offer you the space for lament and prayer. Scriptures and music will guide us through this time. Along the way, we'll offer you several opportunities to tell God your laments. One of the things we learn from reading the Psalms and the Prophets is that we don't have to protect God from our questions and cries. Our prayers don't have to be neat, they don't have to be nice, and we don't have to hold anything back. In this time of prayer, we'll also be inviting you to tear cloth or paper as a way to help us all remember what has been lost, what's been ripped and torn this year, to help us mourn the things in our own lives and in our world that can't be easily repaired or replaced. We will pause now as we watch our fire. Please find a bit of paper or cloth, something to tear as we begin our time of prayer. If you have laments to write on the paper, that's fine. You may also just think of your laments and give them to God. Tell God the things that make you angry or disappointed. Tell God your griefs and your cares.
hear these words from Psalm 13. How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I bear pain in my soul and have sorrow in my heart all day long? How long shall my enemy be exalted over me? Consider and answer me, O Lord, my God. Give light to my eyes, or I will sleep the sleep of death. And my enemy will say, I have prevailed. My foes will rejoice because I am shaken. But I trusted in your steadfast love. My heart shall rejoice in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord because he has dealt bountifully with me. I invite you now to join me in tearing a piece of cloth or paper, uh, the one that you've maybe just written your laments on. We'll do that together. God, you dream of a world where we can all be together in body and spirit to share meals and laughter and embraces. So we cry out to you because that has not been our reality this year. We weep for the loss of relationships, for the loss of routine and normality, and the ability to be physically together. We weep even for the loss of trust that the world is a good, safe place. We are in turmoil and peace seems like just a memory. these words from Jeremiah 8. My joy is gone. Grief is upon me. My heart is sick. Hark the cry of my poor people from far and wide in the land. Is the Lord not in Zion? Is her king not in her? The harvest is past. The summer is ended and we are not saved. For the hurt of my poor people, I am hurt. I mourn and dismay has taken hold of me. Is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why then has the health of my poor people not been restored? Oh God, you dream of a world where there's mercy and kindness and justice and joy and enough to go around. So we must weep tonight for all the lives lost and hurt because of violence and injustice. In the next few moments of silence, we invite you to pray for the victims of the fear and hatred, warfare, terror, greed, and exclusion that continue to devastate our world. Hear these words from Jeremiah 31. A voice is heard in Ramah, lamentation and bitter weeping. Rachel is weeping for her children. She refuses to be comforted for her children because they are no more. O 
Oh God, you dream of a world of joy and peace and right relationships. Now in this silence, let us offer to God our personal griefs and laments. Let us offer our losses, our wrongs, and our griefs to God. Hear these words from Lamentations 3. I am one who has seen affliction under the rod of God's wrath. He has driven and brought me into darkness without any light. Against me alone he turns his hand again and again all day long. He has made my flesh and my skin waste away and broken my bones. He has besieged and enveloped me with bitterness and tribulation. He has made me sit in darkness like the dead of long ago. He has made my teeth grind on gravel and made me cower in ashes. My soul is bereft of peace. I have forgotten what happiness is. So I say, gone is my glory and all that I had hoped for from the Lord. The thought of my affliction and my homelessness is wormwood and gall. My soul continuously thinks of it and is bowed down within me. But this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul that seeks him. It is good that one should wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. We have offered our ripped and torn hopes, our ragged laments, and look, together our laments have fed the fire a fire that reminds us of God's warming love, a love that cannot be canceled, a love that never fails. As we read in Romans 8, neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation, will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. So as we wait through all our dark nights, we can remember God's immense and unfailing love for each of us and for this whole aching world, a love born in Christ on Christmas. Let's pray together. O God of big dreams, O God of great love, we look to you in this darkness, this darkness of our despair. As we weep, we wait and hope and look toward Bethlehem. Help us even in our grief to follow you and to live your dreams, your fierce, brave, life and joy giving dreams tonight and always. Amen. Receive the benediction. 
Go trusting that in this darkness, even now, seeds are growing, hope is being born, and new dreams are being dreamed. Go in the embrace, embrace of God of powerful love, the Christ of humanness and vulnerability, and the spirit that is always, always with us and for us. Amen.